Welcome to Fun Facts Daily, your source for just the good stuff. Monday through Friday, we're bringing fun facts and news you can use, all carefully curated to uplift and inform. So give yourself a break, relax, and learn something awesome in just a few minutes every day. Hi, everyone. I'm Kyle Wood. Today, we'll be learning all about our closest celestial neighbor, the moon. I appreciate your taking the time to tune in and learn something new with me every day. But critical thinking is another important habit for lifelong learners. So before we get into the facts, let's warm up our brains with a little challenge to see if you can tell truth from fiction. Consider this. You ever been outside on a clear night and noticed that the full moon looks absolutely enormous when it's rising or sitting low on the horizon? It can seem so close you could almost reach out and touch it. But is the moon actually physically closer to us at that point, making it appear bigger than when it's high up in the sky? What do you think? Is this a genuine astronomical phenomenon, or is it all in our heads? We'll find out at the end of this episode. Now for your word of the day. Today's word is perigee. Perigee is the point in the orbit of the moon or satellite at which it is closest to the Earth. When the moon reaches its perigee, and it happens to be a full moon, we get what's popularly known as a supermoon, which can appear slightly larger and brighter in the sky than a typical full moon. The word perigee comes from the Greek. It's a combination of peri, P-E-R-I, meaning near, and G, which comes from the Greek word for earth. So perigee literally means near earth. The opposite of this is apogee, which, as you might guess, is the point where the moon is farthest from the earth. Time for your daily high five, our top five fun facts about the moon. Number one, there's art on the moon. Just about two years after Neil Armstrong first walked on the moon, the Apollo 15 crew in 1971 left behind a small 3.3 inch long aluminum sculpture called Fallen Astronaut. The work was created by the Belgian artist Paul van Hoydunk. And it's a sort of stylized, modern depiction of an astronaut in a spacesuit of sorts. It's basically a few arcs on an aluminum form. But it's intended to commemorate the astronauts and cosmonauts who had passed away in advancement of space exploration. Van Hoydunk wanted it to be a simple symbol of all people and not a specific depiction of any individual astronaut or cosmonaut. Alongside the sculpture, David Scott, who installed the piece, placed a small plaque with the names of the 14 astronauts and cosmonauts who had passed away up until that point. Interestingly, that's not the only thing an astronaut's left behind on the moon. On the final Apollo mission, Apollo 17, the astronaut Eugene Cernan left a more personal mark. Before climbing the ladder of the lunar module for the last time, he knelt down and traced his daughter Tracy's initials TDC into the lunar dust. Because the moon has no wind or rain to erode the surface, those initials are likely still there. A beautiful reminder that a father's love for their child will be there for eternity. Number two. The Apollo 11 mission was the culmination of years of work from countless people, but for the astronauts involved, it was a fairly quick trip. For such an immense journey, the Apollo 11 astronauts made incredible time traveling for about 76 hours to reach lunar orbit. That's just over three days. But when you're in a tiny spacecraft about the size of a minivan for that long— you got to get creative working out solutions for everyday situations, like sleep or going to the bathroom in zero gravity. For sleeping, things were pretty basic. The commander and lunar module pilot had hammocks that they would string up, creating a sort of bunk bed, and the astronauts said it was actually quite comfortable once you got used to floating. 
Going to the bathroom was a bit more complicated. There was no high-tech space toilet. Astronauts used a hose connected to a valve that would vent waste out into space, where it instantly froze into a cloud of tiny ice crystals. For solid waste, they used a much less glamorous system, a bag and an adhesive seal. It was a challenging and not very popular process, but it was a necessary part of life on the three-day journey to walk on the moon. Number three, moon dust is not what you might expect, and it has a very distinct smell. When the Apollo astronauts returned from the moon, they brought back dust that had clung to their spacesuits, and they all noticed something surprising. It had a smell. After being exposed to the air in the lunar module, the fine, powdery dust gave off a scent that the astronauts described as being like spent gunpowder or a firecracker that had just gone off. The smell was likely caused by the lunar dust particles reacting with the oxygen and moisture in the cabin for the first time. Unlike dust on Earth, which is worn down by wind and water into rounded particles, moon dust is made of tiny, sharp, and abrasive bits of glass and rock. Billions of years of micrometeorite impacts have pulverized the surface into a fine powder that's as abrasive as sandpaper and can cling to everything. This made it a potential hazard as it could wear down spacesuit seals and clog equipment. Number four, the moon's gravity and an amazing cosmic coincidence shape life on Earth. The moon has a diameter of about 2,159 miles, while the sun's is a whopping 864,000 miles, making the sun about 400 times wider than the moon. But the sun is also about 400 times farther away from us than the moon is. Because of this incredible coincidence, the tiny moon and the giant sun appear to be almost the exact same size in our sky. This is what makes the total solar eclipse possible, allowing the moon to perfectly block out the sun's disk and reveal its beautiful corona. Now, the moon is significantly smaller than the Earth, and since gravity is a function of mass, the moon's gravity is about one-sixth as strong as the Earth's. That means a person who weighs 180 pounds on Earth would only weigh about 30 pounds on the moon. But even though its pull is weaker, we can definitely feel its effects right here on Earth. The moon's gravity is the main reason we have ocean tides. As the moon orbits, its gravity pulls on the water on the side of the Earth closest to it, causing the water to bulge outwards. At the same time, on the opposite side of the planet, the solid Earth is being pulled toward the moon more strongly than the water, leaving another water bulge behind. These two bulges create the two high tides our planet experiences each day. In our fifth and final fun fact, the moon has moonquakes. We have earthquakes here on our planet, and as it turns out, the moon has its own version, moonquakes. These tremors were first detected by seismometers left on the lunar surface by the Apollo 11 astronauts between 1969 and 1972. Scientists have found a few different types of moonquakes. Some are caused by the gravitational pull of the Earth, which deforms the moon's shape slightly. Other quakes are deep moonquakes, which happen far below the surface and are thought to be caused by the tidal forces between the Earth and the Moon. There are also thermal quakes caused by the extreme temperature changes on the lunar surface as the sun rises and sets. While most of these moonquakes are much weaker than the typical earthquake, they prove that the Moon is not a completely dead or inactive celestial body. Now for some news you can use. Have you ever tried to take a picture of a beautiful full moon with your phone, only to end up with a disappointing white blob in a black sky? Here's a trick to get a much better shot. The biggest problem is that your phone's automatic settings try to brighten the whole dark scene, and this overexposes the bright moon. To fix it, tap on the moon on your screen to set the focus. Once you do, a little sun or light bulb icon will likely appear with a slider next to it. 
drag that slider down to decrease the exposure. This will darken the sky and bring out the amazing details on the lunar surface. And here are a few more things you might want to try to take your moon photography to the next level. First, never use the digital zoom on your phone. It just crops the image and makes it grainy. It's much better to take a picture without the zoom and crop it later. For an even sharper image, brace your phone on a steady surface or use a small tripod, and then activate the camera's self-timer for three seconds. This prevents any shake from pressing the button. If you're feeling adventurous, see if your phone has a pro mode where you can manually lower the ISO to reduce grain and adjust other settings for that perfect professional looking shot. Now for the moment you've been waiting for. At the beginning of the episode, I asked if the moon is actually getting closer to us, making it appear bigger when it's close to the horizon compared to when it's high in the sky. The answer is, that's a fallacy. This phenomenon is known as the moon illusion, and it's one of the oldest and most powerful optical illusions known to humanity. So why does it look so big near the horizon? Scientists believe it's all in our heads, a trick of our perception. The leading theory is the Ponzo illusion, which suggests that our brains judge an object's size based on its background. When the moon is on the horizon, we see it next to familiar objects like trees, buildings, and mountains. Our brains perceive these objects as being far away and therefore very large, so it concludes that the moon, which is behind them, must be absolutely colossal. When the moon is high in the sky, there's nothing to compare it to, so our brain just sees it as a smaller object in a vast, empty space. I hope you enjoyed learning about the moon with me today. Be sure to tune in every weekday for even more fun facts. Fun Facts Daily is an Airwave Media podcast. It was written, recorded, mixed, and edited by me, Kyle Wood. Thanks for sharing a part of your day with me. Be sure to follow Fun Facts Daily on your favorite podcast app so you can keep the good stuff coming your way every day. And if you like the show, please do me a favor and leave a kind rating, review, or just tell your friends about it. 